with Phil Weaver from the North Carolina Coaches Association. The big All-Star game is coming up next week, and uh, it's already All-Star week because you've got players reporting soon. And if you will, how is it different this year? It's got to be a lot different than last year because you got the games back. And last year, it must just be different getting ready this year, too. Uh, last year was horrible. <laughs> uh, we did pick teams because we thought the kids deserved to be honored. But, of course, the coaches couldn't coach, so we brought all them back, and they were all eager to re redo it. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're still not over COVID and we've, we've talked to the health department and got a game plan and, uh, they were most helpful. I really appreciate Dr. Van's help. And we've got our athletic trainers in line and, and the coaches understand what we need to do. And I, I hope the kids do, but they're going to have to bring us evidence of vaccination or a negative test within the last three days or we're not even going to check them in. Hmm. What about any of the limitations as far as running the uh, clinic this year, running the games, any limitations this year with COVID? The only negative was that we can't have the trade show at the clinic, which for most folks that doesn't mean much, but that's, uh, that's where the Coliseum makes their money because they run the trade show, mm -hmm. um, which gives us a break on some other things. And, you know, we have 200 plus vendors there sometimes and ADs can go in and make a whole year's worth of orders, uh, find new products. It's, it's just uh, really sad that we've missed that now for two years. Hmm. What about the uh, uh, kind of off the beaten path outside the box question? What, I've had a few pop up this question here. What about the old uh, coaches luncheon? that going to be held this year for the old coaches? No, we don't have a room. Wow. Um, you know, we're having to to use, trying to space people out, of course. I mean, everybody's still doing that. Uh, we just didn't have room for uh, everything that we wanted to do. How about for the coaches' clinics? Any keynote featured speakers we can talk about? Uh, honestly, I'm with the games. You'd have to ask Mac and Joe, because sure. I've been so tied up. Seems like we're doing double duty on everything now. As far as the games go, give me the itinerary as far as the basic, because we've seen the detailed itinerary, you pass that out as far as in the media. But as far as the itinerary goes, players checking in, football, yeah, basketball, okay. soccer, all checking in, get ready for practice, things like that. Yeah, they all check in around midday. Football comes in on Friday and, of course, immediately goes to practice. And uh, basketball comes in on Saturday and soccer on Sunday. And then we play basketball Monday, soccer Tuesday, and football Wednesday. And we're still at... Uh, Greensboro Coliseum Main Arena and Scott Johnson and the staff were were really insistent that, that they make that available for us and you have to appreciate people that want you to put on a first class show like that and then we're at McPherson for soccer and uh, still at Jamison of course for football. And uh, it's a little quicker in some ways the way you do it these days than it was years ago when you had the football, I guess, on Thursday and right. basketball on Tuesday. It seems like the people stay in town longer. The way things are these days, such a fast-paced society, you got to get these people in and get them out pretty quick. <laughs> That's true. Uh, we actually moved basketball to Monday because of summer school for the kids. We were losing kids for a couple of years because they were in summer school and they couldn't get two days off. But now playing on Monday... That, you know, they can, we can let them go if it's a local school to one class Monday afternoon, oh, yeah. and they may not miss any school. So that's really helped that. Um, and then that moves soccer to Tuesday, but uh, most of the soccer kids are pretty darn good students, and most of them don't have to go to summer school. You look at the basketball, because we talked about that before we began this interview, I uh, remember years ago, I think Ted Brown was a football, a Santa football. Right, I was, yeah. remember his old day. He played basketball, I think, in the games back years ago. I think he played for Mac in 75, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, and it might have been the MVP. <laughs> wow. And then you had Ethan Albright, who was a football. He played basketball, too, I think, he his did. time. He did. And now we're seeing this year a good note, too, about Breon Pass out of Reedsville, outstanding football and basketball player. But he'll be here for basketball. So that's going to be a big draw, I think, for you, Breon Pass out of Reedsville. Oh, we're, we're certainly hoping so. And Reedsville's always been a good traveling town, so it's not very far for them to come down here. And you've had some great basketball over the years. I know it's changed some in recent years because the college is bringing students in and different players, restrictions from coaches. But you look back to the old days, I mean, the David Thompson era, boy, unreal. I think it was that year he played here, maybe David Thompson and Ray Harrison in the same game or yeah, close to it. Yeah, they did. And, that, and a lot of good memories for you there, I'm sure. 
Yeah, that was actually, uh, I was not quite on board. I think that was 75. Again, Max Year, he was loaded. <laughs> um, and, uh, well, I mean, of course, back in my day, it was Maravich and wow. Rusty Clark. and. Uh, mm. What about Bobby Biden. Jones? Bobby Jones play? No. Hmm. You know, I'm okay. not sure why. I don't think he did. I, I don't know. Well, the names you mentioned. I'm a dookie. I don't remember those oh, yeah. Carolina guys. You know? Rusty Clark and the guys you mentioned. What about what about uh, what if James Worthy played back in his day? No, he did not. Worthy and Jordan were not allowed by the NCAA in wow. their infinite wisdom to right. limit kids to two All Star games. I got you. That's still when they started adding yeah. all the different ones, yeah. And yeah. back then you had the Capital Classic and McDonald's, and, sure. and you couldn't tell a kid not to play a no. Oh, no national recognition. So there, yeah, sure. that hurt. Well, what you about, know Devonte Graham played. Oh yeah, the whole boy. Uh, good one. Chris Paul's pretty good name right now. He played too. Absolutely. Wow, amazing. Yeah. We, we may forget about some of those guys because they went to college. Didn't stay in college. Maybe sometimes a couple of years one of the pros, but yeah. they played in the All Star games. That's yeah. huge. And uh, what about yourself? Though? Did you get to coach in the All Star games? If you did, I coached back at eighty four. Eighty four. Um, which was, uh, I always tell the coaches, I, I ask them, you know, this year's coaches, I'll say. Who won the 84 men's basketball <laughs> game? And they'll all go, I don't know. I said, so don't worry about whether you win or lose. Right. It's the, the friendships you make and the honor of being selected that, that counts. And, uh, yeah, I got to coach with Buddy Baldwin, wow. who was Roy Williams' high school coach. Oh, my, that's mentor. a good connection there then. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about girls? Did you coach in the girls' all-star game? No. Um, no, I didn't. Uh, yeah. I would like to have coached in the North Carolina, South Carolina once, but right. uh, I, don't, I didn't get selected, so I don't know. <laughs> well, you had a lot of experience doing these games and working with these coaches. I guess your coaching background helps you work with these coaches, too, because you've had to work with hundreds and hundreds of coaches over the years. Yeah, I've, I've, it's, it's very gratifying to, to get the emails and, and letters and notes from guys that just coached and how much it meant to them. and how many friends they've made, and I'll bump into coaches that coached 10 years ago. Said, you know, I, I played in state championships, and that's still as good an experience oh, yeah. as I had. Hmm. Uh, it, it's really, uh, it's really wonderful for so many people, particularly from small towns. You know, those of us in Greensboro have played in the Coliseum with the Little Four and the um, Haco or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we were in the main arena when it was a Little Four, but. <laughs> um, you know, a little, little town. We got a kid in, in the game from Croatan and a coach from Croatan. You know, how often is that going to happen? Good connection. Um, I remember the year um, uh, we had a guy from Cherokee in the game, and they, they brought a lot oh, of fans. Right. They brought a busload of fans because really. um, it was so rare. And, so, and for some of those people going to Greensville, that's a trip to a big town for all these kids. You know, like you say, small town with that's pretty big. Well, yeah, some of them have never stayed in a motel. Some of yeah. them have never... Uh, been to a big mall or Certainly. I mean it, it's surprising but it's you know you get out in the mountains or way down east uh, they don't have a lot of opportunities Certainly. if Greenville or uh, Wilmington are the closest big cities maybe and these kids are going to be thankful too that they're actually able to play in the games this year after what happened last year they're going to be glad there are games this year and they can come and play I, they must appreciate it because I know to. that the, the coaches I talked to were just um so thankful they had a regular season at all, even though it was only seven football games. Mm -hmm. um, I remember Adrian Snow at West Forsyth was being interviewed. Uh, he, he, he was breaking down. He was so Emotional. thankful to get to play. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. What about uh, going back a little bit, just a little bit further back, it, have they always been in Greensboro and had the games end up in Greensboro? Just a little bit of the brief history for us. Okay, well, 1948. Coach Jameson and Smith Barrier at the News and Record. It was the news back then. Um, we're just talking about, I know South Carolina already had their coaches association. And Coach said, we need something to, to better educate our coaches, me included. <laughs> and uh, so they started talking and said, well, how are we going to pay for a clinic? we got to pay these college coaches to come speak. I mean, where are we going to get the money? And uh, I don't know who had the idea, but said, well, well, let's put on football and basketball games. And those first games, they packed the place. I mean, tickets were probably 75 cents, but mm -hmm. back then, that was a lot of money. A lot of money, yes. <laughs> and uh, so in 49, 
coach got the keys at four o'clock to Jameson Stadium, and we played a football game that night. I was two years old. <laughs> 1949. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, you know, it just grew and grew, and then we added women in '75 or '6, um, and then you know, the Western North Carolina group merged with with the uh, the Chapel Hill crowd and the and the uh, what they used to call the old Negro League joined in, and uh, we added soccer in '92, uh, men and women. And uh, so this will be our seven. We're calling it the 73rd games because we did pick teams last year, mm -hmm. even though we didn't literally play a game. Right. Because we had to call off soccer one year, the men's game, because of the weather. That happens. So you like soccer always. <laughs> there's always that humidity and in a storm, always some kind of storm. Yeah. Yeah, it's it. they, they've had a run of bad luck. I know football had a few years too, when you had some heavy rain. I remember one year, if I'm not mistaken, probably back about the mid '80s, they were scheduled for a Thursday and had to actually postpone it to a Friday one year. I we think did, and that was the biggest mistake we ever made. I wow. remember riding from the Coliseum with Coach Jameson. We were discussing what we were going to do, and the weather forecasters were all gloom and doom and. By 6:30, the sun was back out, wow. and we had we had postponed the game for a night, and we had a miserable crowd. Well, I remember a few years it would rain during the game. You'd uh, stop the game and continue later. You had to do that a few times too. Well, yeah, the worst was '92 when we couldn't start until I think we didn't start till 9:30. Wow! And we played like running clock, eight minute quarters, mm -hmm. and we had a fight on the opening kickoff because the kids were so amped up. Mm. <laughs> uh, that was pretty bad, but. Uh, yeah, football's been pretty lucky, really. You know, it was a time when basketball seemed to have the edge over football. I think football maybe maybe has a little bit more of the edge now these days. It may change this year when Breon passed for the attendance was. But it seemed like basketball at one time, it kind of had the edge, and then football kind of got the edge. And I know the coaches, I guess because football season is coming around, it's been back in the spring, but it's coming up again here in the fall pretty quick. Yeah. And I guess with the clinics, all the football coaches attended, that also kind of spurs football on some too. You're talking about attendance? Yeah, attendance and crowd interest. Yeah, well, really the only huge basketball crowd, we had Rodney Rogers, we had 7,500 people, wow, which yeah. is a pretty good crowd. The Bull from um, Durham. But yeah, but the interesting thing is that our crowds, um, you know, Indiana, Kentucky, our, our basketball crowds are as good as theirs. Our football crowds as good as Texas's was mm, before they dropped their games. Mm -hmm. We're we're one of very few states now that even continue to play. So Texas dropped theirs. They dropped their games, which is huge because of Texas. Yeah, you you, you can't imagine them dropping a football game. Yeah, you think of Texas, Florida, and Oklahoma always having a game like something like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wow. Does Georgia still have theirs, you know? Uh, Georgia does, Florida does, Mississippi does, mm -hmm. uh, Kentucky, uh, some of the western states. But you but guys got to be the longest running around, I would think. Actually, New Mexico beat us. I can't believe it. Wow. I did a... Amazing. I run the National uh, Organization of Coaches right, yeah. Association yeah. Directors, so I did a poll for my own benefit. <laughs> yeah. I thought we'd be right up there, but South Carolina's got us by a few years, mm -hmm. and New Mexico's got them by a few. But I think yeah. we're about the third. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. What about uh, to the particulars about this year? Give us again the uh, three events. Go over the times they'll start, the price of mission, those type things. Get those okay for us. Uh, all right, admission. Coliseum's Ticketmaster. So Monday night's basketball, you have to go on Ticketmaster or you can buy at the door. So you can um, buy at the door at the Coliseum. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the women start at 6.30 and the men are going to be, we're going to play a college length of game. So Two 20 minute halves? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. usually uh, a quarter till nine, roughly, that we start the men's game. But one ticket will get you in both games. Mm -hmm. And uh, then soccer will be same thing 6:30 at McPherson, Bryant Park, and those tickets are on GoFan uh, under East West All Stars North Carolina Coaches Association, and we will have the appropriate uh, Q code I think it's called available out there for people to buy tickets at the at the gate if they want. Um, and then, of course, the men there are going to start at 8.30. We don't play overtime. Mm -hmm. That's the good thing about soccer is it's time. Yeah, you got that clock <laughs> running at a specific yeah. time. Yeah. 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 And then football will be 8 o'clock at Jameson Stadium, Grimsley High School campus. And, again, it's a GoFan uh, ticket arrangement. Mm -hmm. And, interestingly, it's GoFan.co. 
not hmm. dot com. Gotcha. And you got to have your ticket purchased before the game to come in, or you can purchase it at the game by way of the. Uh, right, we'll have a line. person there with a phone with the Q code. And yeah. You can use their phone if you have to mm -hmm. to buy a ticket. So, anybody wanting group tickets, you know, ten or more people, we'll drop the price from ten dollars down to eight, and when they get that through this office. Any other events signed up this week we may not touch on? Or you got you start? Well, you tried to get me to talk about the clinic, and mm -hmm. I I wasn't comfortable. But oh yeah, you know that's huge. That is the largest coaching clinic next to Texas's. But then they have 23,000 members too. Yeah. Um, in the whole country, and we're guessing that probably for a secondary school clinic, it's the second largest in the world. Uh, and I guess since Texas is football, we could claim we're the largest all sports. Mm, certainly. But that's huge. And anybody can go uh, if they want to hear a certain speaker or whatever, or learn something about a certain sport. It's not, we don't limit who can go. Certainly. We just limit who can be a member. <laughs> right. And I guess it's interesting, too, I know on the uh, press release, the practices, uh, public can attend those, too. Absolutely. Practices. Yeah. Come watch. We'd be happy for many people to come as long as they can behave. Yeah, and people sometimes are hungry to go watch a practice this time of year, too, because especially with football season nearing and coming close, people kind of get that bug. I mean, yeah, this is seven yeah. on sevens, but there's some activity there, but they want to come out and watch them and see the guys hit a little bit, too. Yeah. People like to see people hit. The West will be at, uh, well, they probably won't do a lot of hitting. Yeah, probably not. It's probably limited there. Yeah, the West is at Western Guilford, and if they get too hot, they can go in the gym and watch basketball practice mm -hmm. with the girls, and uh, Southwest is hosting the East football and, and men's basketball. And then uh, one thing we didn't talk about, we have a, a really great banquet every year on Sunday night. Um, Danny Harnden from GHP TV is the MC, and uh, uh, Rusty LaRue is going to be Ooh, our speaker. Good one. Former All Star Former and All -Star. NBA champ, pretty good combination. Certainly. And we'll have about 600 people there. Where would that be held at? Uh, Sheraton Four Seasons. That'll be nice. And of course, that's open to the public. Anybody wants to buy a ticket, mm -hmm. that has to be done through this office. Certainly. Well, you got a lot going on. How 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 have you maintained the uh, energy, the interest, enthusiasm to keep doing us all? You said you're back to about '86 <laughs> when you really got too heavy, but uh, how have you maintained the interest all these years? Well, now I was a manager in 1960. All the way back when you were younger, younger days. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, when I was in high school. Um, I told the football guys today, I said, you know, I could have retired from this a long time ago, Certainly. but I have too much fun. And uh, working with Mac and Joe and David and Reed and Tim and Malia, uh, we're kind of a little family of our own. Um, we, we, we have such a good time. Uh, everybody gets along. Then Clayton, Nance, and Reggie Peace and Herc DeGraw come in to help me with the games and Chris Causey. And, Brian, uh, Brandon Chrisman from Southwest mm -hmm. and uh, Mark White and his training staff. Uh, it's just, it's good people and they're all intent on making it a great event for the kids and for the coaches. Coaches coaches aren't used to coming up and not having to do anything. Certainly. All they have to do is coach and they, they don't understand that. Not to get the field ready, not to do any uh, logistics no. preparation. No. Just come in and get they don't have to put a cone out. If yeah. they just tell the folks what they want, they're going to have it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess for you, going to school all those years at Grimsley, back in your Grimsley days and being a teacher all those years, this is kind of like some ways still coming to school every day, too, isn't it? <laughs> well, I'd certainly look over and see it. Certainly. And, uh, we get each other's packages and mail occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> it's good being around the coaches and kids, too, isn't it? Still doing that? I think so. I mean, I've got 14 grandchildren now. Wow, and, that's uh, a couple of teams there. I, yeah, I got... Uh, my two oldest boys are going to be managers this year, so it's full cycle. It's wow. kind of cool. Um, but i got to have something to do. I mean, I can't play golf every day, all day. Yeah. And uh, mowing the yard gets old. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I wouldn't be around any people either. That'd be the... I, I Inter interaction. I, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think being retired... We live out in the country a little bit, down southeast way, and um, my nearest neighbor's 400 feet, I guess, so... You know, I know them, but yeah. it's, it's not. Uh, five days a week I can come in and talk about something I love and has been good to me, and hopefully I can make things good for some, some more coaches and some more kids. What's going to be your biggest responsibility next week, biggest chore for you to make sure it gets done and gets done perfectly? Is there one you can pinpoint? 
No, because if I've done my job right, all that's been taken care of. Got a checklist already been checked off. I think the biggest fear, obviously, this year is COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, if we get down to five basketball kids, we can play a game. If we're down to 11 soccer or nine, we can play nine on nine, I guess. Mm -hmm. But football, if I've got two quarterbacks and a center on one team and the kicker all get it, what am I going to do? Right. And I don't have an answer either. <laughs> Only so much you can do. Yeah. We, I mean, we've talked about it. Every time we talk about it, we sort of change subjects, and we never answer it because I don't think there is an answer. Yeah. Well, you'll make a lot of conclusions and come to a lot of results this week, I'm sure. Phil, thank you for your time, as always, today. I know you love what you're doing. Just keep doing it and keep up the good work. Thank well, you so much. Andy, that very phrase could be turned around and put right to you. Well, good to see you, as always, <laughs> and keep going. Yes, sir. Thank you. You too.